All right, so here it is. Uh, the whole thing's done. I uh, got quite a look. What is up, y'all? Welcome back to Vanderbilt Outdoors. So today, uh, I've been working on a project for my cousin who's graduating this year and has shot several bucks recently. Uh, well, in the last couple of years. And I've had those for a while, just the skulls and the antlers. Uh, so we're gonna make like a European mount collection. Um, so we're gonna be working through that. Uh, should be exciting. So uh, we're gonna take you through that process. Right now, we've got some skulls in the water boiling. So we're gonna be putting these on like an old fence post uh, type deal or uh, something like that around fence post type deal. Um, it's gonna be about four foot tall, I think. Uh, and then we'll put these on kind of like one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, kind of staggered down. Um, you'll see it. It'll come It'll come together. Uh, then I'll have like a little base. Then I've got several of his other smaller bucks that he's killed, those heads as well, and some sheds and stuff. The smaller ones will kind of go in like a bed of like grass stuff at the base. That's uh, the kind of base plate hole where it sits, I guess. I don't know. Um, and so those will be along the bottom there, uh, just kind of tossed in there looking. The rest of these will be actually on the post, so that's going to look pretty good. It'll come together, I promise. Uh, but that's what we're working on right now, uh, so kind of exciting stuff. We've got this boiling real good now. I'm trying to keep the base of the antlers kind of out of the boiling water just so it doesn't discolor them too much. We'll kind of touch up color as well, but I'm just trying to boil all that meat off. It's been on there for a year to three years, depending on when you shot this one. As you can see, we're starting to boil some of that meat off and stuff. We've got the old Tristy Power Washer. as much off as we can. And we'll boil it again and power wash again and boil again and power wash again. So as you can see after we got a good power wash on it, we're already getting a lot of that meat off. Got some meat and hair along the bone still just needs to keep boiling. But for the most part we got a lot of it off. We'll throw it back in let it keep boiling. Water, so it gets that top part. So it's the next day. Um, we got the three skulls done yesterday. Well, two of them actually done, uh, and we got one more still in the pot. That was the one that I was showing you as it was getting dark last night. We dumped out the water last night. Put some new water in here. We're gonna get it boiling. As you see, we got the skull pretty clean compared to what it was yesterday. We got a little piece of hair there still that. Hopefully we can get boiled off. Keep going on this and we've got a couple more and then we'll be good to go. Got the flame rolling pretty good in there. You can see it or not, or not. It's, it's kind of rolling, you can see it. But anyways, got this going. Dogs are curious what the heck's all this stuff around, all the the hair and the meat and stuff coming off. Uh, so we took the two we got yesterday all cleaned up uh, made sure there was no more meat hair all that kind of stuff in there and we took some salon care 40 volume creme essentially this is uh, hydrogen peroxide like a heavier percentage rather than your like three percent or whatever this is 40 percent i think um, but we put it in a tub got a paintbrush brushed it on just the skull make sure you don't get any on the antlers because it'll discolor them make them white just kind of leave it in the sun for an hour or so uh, it'll help whiten them and then you can see this one's fairly brown um, this one's a little bit better but this will whiten them a little bit and give them that cleaner look uh, about them the white look um, so just make sure you cover all the surfaces of the skull and don't get any on the antlers we'll let that sit we got a couple more to clean up here uh, this last one in here we'll clean it up let it dry and do the same thing with that cover it in the salon care hydrogen peroxide stuff like i said he's got a bunch of old deer that he shot when he was younger we got those cleaned up and they're just caps the way they cut them off and some of the deer he shot recently here got them all whitening up and got one more over there we need to clean yet and then these two just came out of boiling uh, cleaned up all the 
meat and stuff off of them. So we'll get a coat of peroxide on these and send them out tomorrow. Let them uh, get nice and white. We picked up the fence post today that they're going to be going on. Uh, so we'll start working on that here in the garage too. It's starting to get dark already. Everything looks looking good. All right, y'all. So we're back inside. Um, we've boiled all the heads. Uh, we've taken all the meat off, all the skin, all that kind of stuff off the hair. Um, so this is what we're working with right now. So we've got these three that I just finished boiling, getting skin off and everything. Uh, these three here. You can see how yellow the, the skulls are, right? Um, and then we've got this one that we've uh, put two coats of peroxide on. This one that we've put a coat of peroxide on. And that one that we've got a coat or two of peroxide on. Uh, so these are all uh, the deer that JJ's killed, excluding this last year. Uh, so this past fall, 2021 fall. Um, I'm not exactly sure which years are which. I have a picture somewhere of them all. Um, but I think like this one right here uh, was his first one he ever shot. Um, either that one or, or this one. Uh, so goes back a while now uh jj's 18 now so he's killed some nice bucks for for uh, only being 18 but anyway um we're gonna keep cleaning these up uh, these older ones that have sat in the sun and bathed and whatnot uh probably won't get much better than that and they're kind of to look old in the bottom of the the little stand anyways so um the rest of these though we're gonna keep getting cleaned up and hopefully uh, get it done um, here today or tomorrow, uh, we're going to, after these dry, they were boiling and I power washed them just about 30 minutes ago. So once they get dried out, um, I'll put some peroxide on them. So it's the next morning. Like I said, usually when you are adding peroxide to the skulls, you want it to be sunny out because the sun helps like the whitening process, right? So, um, unfortunately, it's supposed to rain the next couple days. So we're going to have to do this all inside, and it's going to take a little bit longer. They've already starting to whiten quite a bit, actually. Um, you can kind of see they're whitening a little bit. They're not getting as white as the, the other ones that were out in the sun all day, um, but they're getting there. So we'll add probably another coat of peroxide on there and, and let them get, get real white. Okay, so here's where we're at. Uh, we got an eight foot long uh, post, um, fence post type thing from Tractor Supply actually. And then it was treated, so I had like a green hue to it. So we stained it with a weathered oak stain that kind of gave it this uh, weathered texture, I guess, looking weathered look, I guess. So that's what we got here. And then I just kind of made a little base out of it. So. I took and cut 45s uh, opposite each other just to have like a little base um, so it's more stable so it doesn't wiggle as much uh, and then it's going to have another like natural vegetation base around it but we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, this is just to kind of sturdy it up a little bit um, so it's got the, the Craig screw through there, um, the pocket screw and then another screw through the top there uh, just to kind of secure it up and then it'll have screws going uh, from the base into it. I'm actually gonna put lag bolts from the square base, uh, put four of them into the, the post itself so it'll be, it'll be pretty sturdy. Um, but it's about six foot tall uh, is what we're gonna make this. Uh, then we got all the mounts over here. As you can see, uh, they didn't get as white as I would like. Um, we could spend more time whitening them, obviously. Uh, but we're kinda in a, in a time crunch here now. Um, trying to get this done for my cousin. I'm not a professional by any means, uh, so, but I mean, they, they turned out pretty well. Uh, once we get them on there, you'll see them better. But we just got these sitting. We got two box fans running just to dry them out a little bit more. Uh, I rinsed them off this morning again. And we're gonna spray these later. Um, so to <clears throat> kind of get the, to keep the color nice, uh, in the base of the antlers where it's a little bit darker like that um, when you boil them and stuff it kind of fades a little bit this is probably the best one you can really tell where it kind of boiled uh, a little bit of that color off of it 
Uh, so we're going to use some old English scratch cover uh, and just kind of touch it up a little bit to make it look a little bit better. Um, really give the, the antlers some texture. And then after that, uh, we're going to throw some uh, polyurethane cover uh, over the antlers and the head uh, just to give it kind of a protective coat. And then I've got this black and these little deals uh, to hang the head. So we'll put a bolt through this last one. Uh, so there'll be a bolt through there that the heads kind of hang on. Uh, so I'm going to touch up. As you can see, there's the velvet here kind of came off a little bit. So I'm going to kind of touch that up since it's pretty white and kind of sticking out. So I'm going to like layer a little bit of this on here. And then I'm going to use this side of the brush where there's not a large concentration of Old English and kind of rub it back and forth to kind of uh, dab it out and whatnot and not look like it's a big heap of stuff just kind of applied there, right? So now as you can see, it looks pretty similar to the rest of the bone here. Um, so I'm going to do a little bit closer down here, a little bit on the side here. Make sure you don't get anything on your little bit of the So as you can see we darken that all up now. You can kinda you need to throw a little bit more in this area to kind of blend it together with the non the non-dyed stuff. So just trying to blend it around the antler here. Blends together with the rest of the, the antler there. So um, I just saw that was kind of all white. And this might even be a better place to do it so you can see that there's velvet starting to come down there. So it kind of washed away um, the color of it. So we're going to just. I'm just gonna kind of put a little bit on there. You don't need much at all. And then wipe it away as soon as I get very much on there at all. Just kind of blend around it, wipe it off. You can see that it doesn't even look. It doesn't stick out now that there's a little white spot there and whatnot. Uh, kind of color this in a little bit as well. You can just see it darkens up the, the antlers a little bit. Just kind of correct a little bit of that that color where it boiled away and really doesn't look bad. So we're doing that. Uh, we stained. This is going to be the trim piece around the base. Uh, and then there'll be some fake moss and stuff in there. Uh, so we got some contact adhesive uh, that we'll spray on the base and on, up a little ways to cover all this uh, with like fake moss stuff. So that'll hold it in place, obviously. Uh, so yeah, that's what we're working with right now. And... It's going, it's going. So out here, we sprayed the, the base, the square base piece with like a, a dark green color so it can, the moss doesn't show through all the wood brown colors, I guess. So we're gonna keep going. All right, y'all, it's starting to come together now. There she is. And we'll have them staggered here and then here and then kind of go down the post aways, but as you can see, these are the deals we're using. Um, so we might use the smaller ones, actually. These are the longer ones. Uh, so we might use the smaller ones. We're gonna paint them black or something quick, uh, just so they have a different color to them. You've got 
the base painted. We got these painted, the square base painted. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect because uh, you just don't want the super bright wood color coming through. Um, but we're gonna be putting fake moss on it, like I said. This is the fake moss we got. So we have like a little bit greener, um, and a little bit more brown stuff. So we'll be mixing this all together and then putting it a, a, around that, which will be mounted to this. Have a little trim around it, and then this will be filled in there with antlers, uh, some of the sheds and stuff. Carly just helped me get the trim piece around. Uh, so there's the base, and then we put a nice trim around it. And then, like I said, it's a little bit of room to lay some moss in there, and then we'll build up the center like a little mound around uh, where the post is gonna go right here. You can see the circles. So we're just gonna countersink uh, these so the, the heads, um, where they at, right here. By the way, these are not exposed, hanging down. Take this, flip the pole upside down, and secure it on there. Yeah, boy. And then. He's placing the moss around the bottom. I'm gonna get the I should just spray and spray adhesive and adhering the moss to that. And uh, so we're gonna get the the deal set on here. Alright, so we're gonna put through here. And another one right there. Make sure that's tight and level. And then we'll grab the bolts that we painted. I'll thread the nut almost all the way up there with this deer head that we're gonna put here. And then throw this other one down it. Then we'll bend this down to like a, like I said, like a 30 degree angle or something. Probably right, that's probably a little too far. Right there-ish. And we'll put the head on there and see what it looks like. So we're gonna take and set the head just right through there, the bolt. And then set it like that, right sitting on top of that. So that actually looks probably about good right there. So then we're gonna put two more right here. See how those look. Probably right, right there. All right, so it's coming along. There's two so far. The third one is gonna go right here. And then another one in the middle. And then probably two more across the bottom. Quite a little deal. Down here, uh, we're gonna put two more. But as you can see, uh, the heads are kinda cut. There's no place really to, to hang on to them. Um, so we're gonna probably tie uh, baling wire or twine along there and just create like a little deal where there'll be a, a nail or screw or whatever and it'll just sit on there like that um, underneath of it so 
Um, so we'll see what this ends up looking like after we get to Nebraska with it. And we might end up using this backside as, as well and make it like a 360 pole deal where it can be pulled off the wall a little bit. But for now, the idea is that it sits like in a corner kind of or something like that. Wait, so wait, how do you want me to say this? Just say however you want. You're not videoing it, right? How's it going, everyone? Uh, JJ Smith here of Smithy Outdoors. But Tyler here, uh, he made me all these uh, deer, uh, European mounts uh, for my graduation. Uh, so I'm just going to tell you a few of these stories and um, how things happened. So I'll first start off with uh, this buck. Uh, I was out hunting with my dad. Uh, we were along Tri County uh, checking traps. And uh, we saw this deer out, this mule deer, out with a bunch of does. And it was in the muzzleloader season. I only had a sock up about 50 yards, and I shot him. Uh, sadly, he didn't go down with the first shot, so I had to shoot him again. But uh, it's a pretty good late season mule deer. All right, next, we'll start off with uh, my first crossbow buck. This was actually down on some uh, public land, uh, down just right outside of town here. Basically in town. Uh, pretty fun hunt. I was hunting with my dad. I was probably like 12 or 13. Yeah, uh, so I shot this deer with a crossbow. Go with this buck right here. Take it off here. This buck I shot with um, an old bow of mine that I had as a diamond SV1 edge. Uh, we had some uh, private land down in Brady, Nebraska. And um, this night I actually had another deer come in, a uh, bigger caliber deer. Uh, which is say I didn't make the best shot on him, but I did uh, end up getting this deer that night. And uh, so I should have tagged out that night, but unfortunately I didn't, but got this great deer. About 10, 12 yard shot. This deer um, was on public land, also in Brady. I was actually just hanging a tree stand and it was supposed to be really uh, very windy that night. So uh, I was like, you know what, I, I got down, I was tired, I had my bow with me, I was like, I'm just gonna sit here for a while. I was just wearing jeans and a camo shirt. And uh, it was about 80 degrees out, about two o'clock in the uh, mid middle middle afternoon. And about 30 minutes of me sitting in that tree stand after, right after I just hung it, uh, he came in. I think uh, what happened was he heard me rattling around and everything. Uh, so you might've heard that and thought it was another buck. So uh, he came in right underneath my tree stand uh, about five yards, I shot him. He ran about 100, 150 yards and found him dead. This is uh, my biggest bow deer. Look at this deer, old basket rack buck. Uh, I also shot this with a bow, uh, private. Really not much to this. Uh, a funny thing is about this deer, um, I had to call my dad up and he was he was getting off work and I was exhausted and tired. And uh, I had to drag this deer all the way across the river myself. And when the when deer's wet, they get pretty heavy. So uh, yeah, that's pretty good. A little bow buck though. Uh, I shot this one down on some Kozad land uh, that we have, um, also private. This deer was actually my first deer with my new Hoyt RX1 Ultra, um, sitting right there. Uh, this deer came in like right right before dark. Uh, so at that time I was like pretty like newbie at bow hunting. So like the tree stand I had is pretty hard to maneuver in. Uh, Pretty open area too. Uh, I was right along a cornfield in a big old like grass plot, I'd say. Um, he came in, he was coming right under my tree stand. He saw me stand up because at that time I thought you should stand up to shoot a deer. Uh, so he saw me stand up. He ran out about 30, 40 yards. I uh, got a good shot on him. Uh, I think it was a litter shot, so it was a little far back, but he only ran about 40 yards and uh, plopped over dead. So <laughs> this is actually one of my favorite deers. Um, I shot, I also shot this with my bow. Uh, has a little uh, um, of the moss still hanging off of it. Uh, I shot this deer uh, actually in rifle season here in Nebraska. So I shot it with my bow though. Um, you can hunt a bow here um, all year round, so it's pretty nice. Uh, I shot this deer in a cornfield. Um, I w we were over by uh, we have permission on some cornfields out in the country, out in the valley, we call it. So we were driving around, and I, we saw this deer out in a cornfield about 100 yards. All I did was uh, stepped out of the vehicle and walked into the cornfield about 60, 70 yards, and he was out there about 80 yards, and I let the arrow fly and perfect double lung shot. Uh, 
So yeah, this is actually one of my favorite, dude, just because it, it was like, it was a cool uh, memory uh, to just like be able to like, like get, get there and like to walk up on this deer without him spooking. So I thought that was pretty cool. Plus the moss hanging off the antlers is also really cool. Uh, this deer right here, uh, shot also on private land. This deer was actually a late season deer, I believe, within the last couple weeks of uh, all deer season before you can, you can only get to late season. Uh, it was kind of just a last minute opportunity, but you know, I'd be happy to uh, ta uh, tag out with this deer any day. It's a pretty nice uh, five by four, so uh, yeah, I'm proud of this deer. But, uh, pretty good last minute deer I'd say with a with a bow as well uh, this deer so it's a little dirty obviously but this is the deer I shot this year sorry <laughs> uh, I shot this deer this year um, uh, so I was actually uh, messing around in my tree stand kind of it was pretty dark it was a couple minutes so uh, legal shooting light ended he came in him and another uh, little buck came in he presented a shot at about 15 yards I was actually standing up in my tree stand getting ready to get down because uh, I didn't see anything all night and then he popped off. We had him on trail camera, and uh, I was I was glad to shoot this deer. It's probably the biggest body deer I've ever shot. Um, not the biggest horns, but you know it's still a very beautiful deer, and uh, I'd gladly shoot another one. Like Tyler added um, a few more deer to this. This deer I shot down on some public land or private land with a rifle. Uh, I was like 12 or maybe I don't know. I was, I was young. Uh, this deer right here, uh, two years ago, Tyler came down to Nebraska and, uh, hunted with me. We did, uh, get his tag build, uh, but we went out to some public land and just searched around and looked for some deer, and we found this pretty nice shed, um, on public land, so that's pretty cool. Uh, this deer, pretty wild story to it. Shot it north of Gothenburg, Nebraska, where I live. Private land. I'm pretty proud of this deer. Very good deer. Uh, Muzzle loader season, we were just trying to fill permits, and I uh, luckily got this opportunity at him. Shot him about 35, 40 yards with my point again. So yeah, that's about it for um, the deer situation. I've shot a few more. I guess this deer right here uh, was my very first ever uh, buck with, uh, I had a bear apprentice too, and uh, I shot this deer with it, um, about 50 yards. Pretty, pretty good little buck for a first buck. So, but that that about concludes it. Uh, so, again, I gotta thank Tyler for uh, making me this uh, European mount um, pole for my graduation. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll see you next time. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I had a lot of fun building that uh, European, or as Steve Vanilla says, freedom mount. Um, pedestal deal uh, for JJ so he can kind of keep all of his deer displayed and whatnot and not just laying around. Um, so that was super cool. Uh, again, congratulations to JJ for graduating. Hopefully everything in the future is good for you uh, and you enjoy college and whatnot. Here's to many more hunting adventures. We'll see you on the next one. And don't forget, explore the outdoors.